Hello everyone. Welcome to the lecture on globalization and print media. This lecture is part of your paper on media and globalization. The present lecture will help us in understanding broadly how technological development and economic imperatives are able to challenge the traditional media structures in society. We will get an overview of the mechanisms of the print media industry and the challenges it faces in view of the digital revolution and the strategies it adopts to combat those challenges. Globalization, as you are aware, is an ongoing process driven by finance capital and advancements in technology and communications. It shows itself in the growing interdependence of economies, free movement of goods, and free movement of goods and services and in linking people, regions and countries much more closely together than they have ever been before. Our lives today are intertwined with people in all parts of the world via the food we eat, the clothing we wear, the music we listen to, the information we get and the ideas we hold. We have also seen how mass media and communication have been the agents as well as the objects of ongoing processes of globalization. In this lecture, we will briefly discuss about the strengthening of the global media market in the 1990s with more and more nations going for deregulation in the media sector. This lecture will however specifically focus on print media and how it has fared in the era of globalization, especially in the Indian context. We will explore how contrary to trends across the world, print media in India has grown exponentially in recent years and we will take a critical look into the reasons for this expansion. It would be interesting to map its growth trajectory at a time when online media has affected the circulation of newspapers in the advanced countries of the West. The lecture will also discuss the current trends and strategies being adopted by newspaper owners to keep their businesses afloat in the face of stiff competition from television, radio and digital media. Globalization has emerged as a key point of reference for understanding current transformations in society, economy and media. Some theorists like Giddens and Castells refer to globalization as a central driving force behind the rapid social political factors that are reshaping modern societies and the world order. While David Harvey has described it as a compression of time and space, Giddens has defined globalization as the intensification of worldwide social relations which link distant localities in such a way that local happenings are shaped by events occurring many miles away and vice versa. It is mostly agreed that social, political and economic activities influence and are influenced by transnational events. The social networks being woven today do not have nations as geographical frames of reference. Globalization transcends national borders, links actors that do not represent national units and creates trans-regional units, linking areas that were isolated from each other. Examples of such social networks are subsidiaries of a multinational company or the culture groupings that interact via the internet. Marshall McLuhan's concept of a world as a global village underlines that the same fact that the world is increasingly connected together through the media and events in one part of the globe could be experienced from other parts in real time. Time has ceased, space has vanished, we now live in a global village, a simultaneous happening, he wrote in his 1960s epoch Understanding Media, which has again gained prominence in the age of internet. 
Castells in his first volume, The Network Society, postulates about the emergence of a new economy based on informationalism and globalization and points to the fact that globalization, new forms of inclusion and exclusion, a new form of capitalism. Thinkers like Tomlinson feel that globalization transcends the barrier of the nation state and makes the world more homogeneous and standardized. Such thinkers fear that cultural diversity might become a casualty in the process. For Tomlinson, globalization is the rapidly developing process of complex interactions between societies, cultures, institutions and individuals worldwide. It is a social process which involves a compression of time and space shrinking distances through a dramatic reduction in the time taken either physically or representationally to cross them, so making the world seem smaller. On the other hand, Arjun Apadurai speaks of indigenization. He says that the homogenization argument subspeciates into either an argument about Americanization or an argument about commoditization. What these arguments fail to consider, according to Apadurai, is that at least as rapidly as forces from various metropolises are brought into new societies, they tend to also become indigenized. Nedevain Peters describes the process of globalization as the process of hybridization, where introvert cultures are gradually receding and translocal cultures made up of diverse elements are coming to the foreground. There are several theorists, however, who are skeptical about the phenomenon and view it as a supreme myth and as an outcome of unbridled Western capitalism in its extreme dominance and as a tool for expansion of cultural imperialism. Giddens agrees that globalization is a complex process but says it is only incidental to our lives today. It is a shift in our very life circumstances. It is the way we now live. Media technology and proliferation. Now we come to the crux of our discussion. To point to the role of media in the era of globalization. In today's world, the media are all pervasive in economics, politics, culture, religion, education, and in almost every other walk of life. Not only they are purveyor of news, but also shape public opinions and attitudes and acts as a watchdog for the society. McQuail thinks that the mass media are affected like everything else by globalization. They are in a special position themselves as both an object and an agent of the globalizing process. According to Dayathusu, the global media landscape in the 21st century represents a complex terrain of multi-vocal, multimedia and multi-directional flows and multi-directional flows. The proliferation of satellite and cable television made possible by digital technologies as a result of the deregulation and privatization of broadcasting and telecommunication networks have enabled media companies to operate in increasingly transnational rather than national arenas, seeking and creating new consumers worldwide. McQuail reminds us that it was technology that had given a powerful push to globalization. He says the arrival of television satellites in the late 1970s broke the principle of national sovereignty of broadcasting space and made it difficult and ultimately impossible to offer effective resistance to television transmission and reception from outside the national territory. Gradual commercialization of media systems around the world has created new private networks that are primarily interested in markets and advertising revenues. 
In this market-oriented media ecology, the audience are viewed principally as consumers and not as citizens. This shift has fueled demand for imports and stimulated new audiovisual production industries in many countries that look in their turn for new markets. The United States, which continues to lead the field in the export of audiovisual products, is the main exporter of both the online and offline content. From news and current affairs, through youth programming, children's entertainment, feature films, sport and the internet, the US is the global behemoth. Only six multimedia corporations, which are Time Warner, News Corp, NBC, owned by General Electric, Bertelsmann, CBS, Disney, and Viacom, and four internet giants with diversified media holdings, which are Google, Microsoft, Apple, and Yahoo, produce the most content in the world. One of the results of privatization and proliferation of television outlets and growing globalization of US media products is that American film and television exports have witnessed a five-fold increase between 1992 to 2004. Thusu underlines the importance of convergence of television and broadband and how it has opened up many opportunities for the flow of media content. As US-based Western media conglomerates have regionalized and localized their content to extend their reach beyond elites in the world and to create the global popular, many Southern media organizations have benefited from synergies emerging from this globalizing process. Some have skillfully used their position within a media conglomerates, drawing on technological and professional expertise to grow into global operators. The only non-Western genre with global presence is Japanese animation. These represent what may be termed as dominant media flows. The advertising industry too has had to reinvent itself in view of the spread of information technology. According to John Sinclair, for advertising, there has been a shift from the traditional media of radio and television to the more interactive digital mode. The emphasis has now shifted to branding and there is much more incorporation of sales promotion along with media advertising than it used to be before. Campaigns are now devised for cross-platform use, both over traditional media and the internet. The same messages appear in different countries and there is also an indirect internationalizing effect on the media that carry the advertising. The fear of the skeptics is that if people around the world are encouraged to follow a western standard, then it is easier for large multinational companies to manipulate and sell their products and know their buyers' habits and so on, while eroding local cultures and traditions. Print Media, Growth and Challenges The history of journalism is closely linked to the spread of technology and the ideas that globalization brings about. The development of printing press and communications laid the edifice of what we know as print media today. Before that, communication and dissemination of information was carried out through oral means or inscriptions, edicts, notices and manuscripts. Though the Chinese are credited with the discovery of paper and movable types, German goldsmith Johannes Gutenberg first developed the printing press in 1439. The presses that were developed soon after were used for mainly publication of books, especially religious texts like the Bible. But it was only two centuries later that in 1621 a very rudimentary prototype of the modern newspaper, a news sheet, Coranto, appeared in the streets of London. Corantos were not regular and were too specialized in content. The first report of daily news came in the reportings on parliamentary proceedings in 1628 in what was referred to as diurnals. In 1702, the first daily newspaper appeared in 
London, which was called the Daily Koran. But for journalism to have emerged as a profession took some time. Only when postal service, printing capacity and the supply of material were all sufficiently and consistently developed to the point at which the appearance of the journal as a weekly, tri-weekly or daily could be assured, could journalism be said to have recognizably come into existence. As modern technology in newspaper printing and publishing reached great heights, both Europe, especially England and America, had a flood of newspapers. The greatest newspaper of England, The Times, was born in 1784 and was then called the Daily Universal Register, while America's Sun and New York Times also came into being in the 1800s. The major development in mid-19th century was the coming up of news agencies that helped to speed up the supply of news. The news agencies made use of the international telegraph system and fed foreign news to newspapers across the world. Agencies like the Associated Press, Reuters, AFP and ITER TAS have extended their operations to several countries. As telecommunication services improved, and are still predominant. Other agencies such as the German DPA, Chinese Xinhua and Japanese Kyodo have grown too. These world agencies were many a time the only source of international news for the newspapers and would tie up with the national agencies of a country for dissemination of their service. Newspapers and agencies too expanded their news gathering by opening bureaus in different countries across continents. As the newspaper became a dependent source of news and information for people across countries, the industry flourished despite concerns of rising costs and narrowing profit margins. In the mid-1950s, television came on the scene, posing a threat to the print media, both for advertising and consumers' attention. Over time, its real-time coverage made it a preferred medium. Though print stories were still preferred for their depth and analysis, at some stage, and in several instances, the television trends began to set the agenda for the print editors, who were forced to adjust their editorial content. When advertising revenues started falling, in fact, several print houses plunged into the new medium and launched their own television channels. Print media and digital revolution. Then in the 1980s, the digital media brought in a revolution which changed the way media business was being conducted. Media was no longer a one-way deal from top down to mass markets. It was networked allowing many-to-many -many conversation. It didn't have to be centrally produced. Users, readers and viewers all had highly individualized choices and as a result all kinds of new and revolutionary applications emerged. With the meteoric rise of social media sites such as Twitter, Facebook and Instagram, many people have claimed that we are entering a new age in which news must be delivered in 140 characters or fewer. In response, major newspapers have made considerable changes. They have invested resources in developing their news websites and e-paper editions, creating the concept of print without paper. They are attempting to combat diminishing reader interest by shortening stories, adding commentary and most notably using social media to their advantage. In March last year, UK's popular daily, The Independent, moved to a digital-only format after suffering losses. The Independent now has twice as many subscribers to its website, reinforcing the importance of new formats of consumption, such as through smartphones and tablets. The digital focus also extends to its international reach. Instead of investing in paper copies abroad, the Independent has focused on growing its US presence in the digital sphere, scrapping its paywall for non-UK readers in order to undertake an advertising-led push. The industry has been facing a slump over the past decade 
as advertising revenues have declined because they receive the majority of their profits from ads and subscriptions. Some of the most distinguished newspapers have found themselves grabbed for cash. In 2013, total revenue within the newspaper industry decreased by 2.6%, representing over a billion dollars in lost funds. As a result, newspapers like the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and USA Today have all experienced major losses and each of these papers have cut down 20 to 100 newsroom jobs in, in a matter of few months. Often some of the most experienced reporters are the first to be laid off because they have the highest salaries. It was clear that the traditional newspaper business model which relied heavily upon advertisements was no longer going to garner much revenue. Print media and Indian scenario. In India, the print media story is pretty different. According to the Audit Bureau of Circulation data released in May this year, print publications had an increase in average daily circulation of 23.7 million copies from 2006 to 2016. Defying the trend prevalent in the USA and Europe, where print circulation is in slump, the average number of copies circulated a day grew to 62.8 million from 39.1 million in 2006, a compound annual growth rate of 4.87%. Among the four main geographic zones, the North showed the highest growth at 7.83%, followed by South at 4.95%, and then West and East at 2.81% and 2.63%, respectively. According to the Van INRA World Press Trends 2016 report, which is an international report on paid print circulation trends by the World Association of Newspapers and News Publishers or VAN, USA, Germany, France, Japan, Australia and Britain showed paid print circulation yearly drops of up to 12% in some cases, while India witnessed 14% 18% and 12% growth on this measure in the years 2013, 2004 and 2015 respectively. With regard to the number of paid dailies in circulation, the report says that while the other six countries on the list have shown stagnation in this number across years, India saw the number grow by as much as 2000 titles. Hindi and regional language newspapers rank at the top with total readership of Dainik Jagran touching 56.6 million and that of Dainik Bhaskar at 31.9 million and of Amar Ujala at 29.6 million. Other regional leaders include Lokmat, Daily Thanti, Anand Bazar Patrika, and Inadu. Even as the penetration of English in the country is improving, Times of India, which tops the table among English daily, claims a total readership of 13.6 million, followed by Hindustan Times at 6.3 million. Print Media – India's Reasons for the Increasing Circulation Rise in literacy levels in the country, low pricing of newspapers, and their easy availability were driving the growth of paid print in this country at a time when television, radio and internet users are multiplying too. Another reason for print media's growth is India's economic growth. According to Guha Thakurta, it is the rise in purchasing power of the people. When income grows, the demand for media and entertainment also grows. You want to read more newspapers, magazines and books. You want to listen to radio, you want to watch the television, and you want to surf the net more. Newspapers also offer a great amount of credibility and integrity compared to television according to Chandan Mitra. People recognize that television is quite sensational and not really reliable, so they cross-check and balance the information with newspapers, says Mitra. Sevanti Ninan, in her work Headlines from the Hinterland, speaks of how empowering speaks of how empowering the panchayat has led to increased political participation 
creating awareness and a hunger for news. This gave an incentive to the regional newspapers to expand their reach and launch local editions in small towns and cities in each state. It is because of the growth of the Hindi language and regional media that has bolstered the print media industry's overall performance. Although the English print media and television reach out to the more affluent sections and therefore appropriate a disproportionate share of the advertising revenue, but in terms of reach and circulation, in terms of readership figures, the non-English newspapers are far bigger. Apart from these reasons, the print media industry witnessed revolutionary changes that included increased availability of technology, new offset printing and computing technologies, introduction of color and the entry of young entrepreneurs who introduced the industry to shorter deadlines and risky marketing strategies of price cuts and big discounts to enhance circulation and undercut competition in the market. Another reason includes giving a push to covering community news, having customized sections and pullouts that cater to various segments of readers, together with localized content. The scenario further looked up when in 2002, India approved 26% foreign direct investment in print media and later in 2008 allowed foreign news and current affairs magazines to publish their local editions in India, which will be available cheaper for the Indian consumers. In terms of advertising revenues, the print was initially hit by the entry of private television, recovered in the mid-2000s and shares about 48% of the country's advertising revenue, while television receives 37%. Globally, India continues to be one of the few growth markets for print media. However, within the country, print media is likely to grow at the slowest rate among other comparable industries such as radio, TV and so on. Print media was the second largest industry in this sector behind only television. Projections suggest that while print will remain the second largest industry, its share in the sector will drop from about 25% at present to about 18% in 2021. In today's age of convergence and cross-platform media, the newspaper owners are not only facing competitions from each other, but also from other forms of media. And therefore, the threat from internet remains and therefore most newspapers have their own portals through which they encourage users to give feedback and file news stories from their areas. Apart from portals, the newspapers too have taken the app route wherein news is compressed into 140 characters and is delivered on mobile phones or tablets. But there is a worry that the quality of journalism is affected because of aggressive marketing strategies that insist on speedy delivery and tight deadlines. Another concern is that of dumbing down of information because of compressed delivery formats. They see an opportunity to expand their reach into new territories by launching local editions which cover issues, scandals of those local regions. They are adding color to the edition and include fashion and glamour elements to endear the readers. Conclusion Let us now sum up what we have learned in this lecture. In the present lecture, we discussed about the strengthening of the global media market in the 1990s with more and more nations going for deregulation in the media sector. The lecture also discussed the current trends and strategies being adopted by newspaper owners to keep their businesses afloat in the face of stiff competition from television, radio and digital media. In this lecture, we also dwelt upon how media develop in the era of globalization and how technology was a driving force in its journey through the ages. We also learned about the state of world newspapers today and how India's print media has defied the trend. The lecture also tracked the challenges that the digital revolution has thrown up for the print media and the strategies 
it adopted to combat them. For more details, please refer to the e-text and attempt all the questions given in the end.